today we are heading to Sassuolo, to Italy, to a team that got relegated in shocking fashion last season, after enjoying a spell in the top 10 of Italian football for quite some time. So we have to take over this Sassuolo side here, and not only bring them back to Serie A, but make them the best club in Europe that is the end goal of this rebuild. However, there is one big rule to follow during this rebuild with Sassuolo, as we can only sign Italian players, and at the end of the rebuild we have to have a full Italian side to complete it. So, at the back line we can see we have a few non-Italians, a German, a Toljan, a Croatian, we have Ferrari who is though very old, we have Deutsch, a Scottish man, and then the big man, Loriente, who is of course French, but then again, we have players like Pina Monti, where is he? 24, 74, he is of course Italian, our striker. And the big man Domenico Berardi, who hasn't left Sassuolo by the time of recording this video. So it's very likely that he remains here. And I made him the captain as well of this squad. At the beginning of this uh, rebuild, we have already sold Kiriakopoulos to Basak Sheir, as well as Maxim Lopez who in real life also left the club to Galatasaray in this save, 24.6 million we got, as well as selling goalkeeper Andrea Consili, who was the starting goalkeeper for a long time, but we have to move on as he's already 36, he's gone to Frosinone. Of course, Davide Fratesi has also left the club, but I already removed him from there at the beginning at the, in the default squads. So we have 33 million in our budget from the Maxi Lopez sale, we have made the first big signing here for Sassuolo, bringing in a 20-year-old player, centre midfielder from Juventus, in Fabio Miretti, joining us for 10 million on the dot. The second player we go in for is a left midfielder slash left winger, also of course from Italy, 19-year-old. He comes in from Burnley, it is Luca Coleosho for 4.3 million, a bargain deal. And finally, the biggest deal of the transfer window is centre-back. 35 already, but he can give us the first big season to ensure that we get promoted. He's 83 rated, it is Francesco Acerbi coming in from Inter for 10.2 million. We use, by the way, the wing play tactical vision, at least for the beginning, with Loriente and Berardi as our big wingers. And so this is how the team is coming together for the first season. Acerbi at centre-back. He's 35-83. We have Colleo who is a left midfielder, 18-70. And finally Miretti, 19-75. He's of course the biggest, maybe, man for the future that we have uh, brought in. Acerbi, of course, for now the biggest player in this squad. But with this team... Uh, no, of course, we have, I have forgotten Domenico Berardi, who is still the biggest player of the team. But with those players in, I am sure that we have to battle for promotion. I've also hired a 5-star, five 5-star five scout, Angelo Ferrara, who is setting up a scouting network to find us Italian bright prospects. We've still made a few big signings out. Uros Racic goes to Elas Verona for 4.5 million, Erlich to Espanyol for 7.8, Lipani to Granada for a measly 680k, and then Alvarez to Ipswich, he's of course not Italian, so he had to be sold. 7.4 million, and then Kumi on loan, and Romagna to Karagümrük for 1.35 million. Of course, this squad doesn't have to be fully Italian by the first season, that is impossible. But for now, this is how we are looking. At the end, we need to be fully Italian. At the end of this rebuild with Sassuolo. At the end of season one, we have just about been promoted with Sassuolo, same points than Palermo in third. And even a worse goal difference, but somehow I think the head-to-head uh, -head is what counts first. Salernitana, the champions. We go up to Serie A. Milan win Coppa Italia over Inter. While we have been knocked out in the round of 16 by Roma. Not a bad run, not a bad showing for a Serie B club. 15 goals for Moro on his loan move is the best we have. Berardi with 14, 14 for Pinamonti is great as well. Bayrami with 10, Enrique with 10 assists. 8 goals for Loriote and 8 goals for Torstved. We've even promoted and loaned out the whole Easter players like Bruno here, the right back. 16.58. Bianco, who has gone up by 19, has gone out on loan to Feyenoord. Is now 74 rated as a 17 year old. Absolutely crazy. 17 year old, 68 rated goalkeeper Izzo. 
Colombo 1762, Russo 1869 and Ferry 1864. In the meantime, looking at our squad here, we have Berardi at an 86, our captain. Pinamonti up to 78. Loriote at an 80. Of course, we cannot keep him as we need a fully Italian squad at the end. But for now, he's fine. Enrique Bolocca also not to be kept, just like Tresoldi. Acerbi has gone down to 79. Still one of the best players in the team. 78 rated Toij and 73 rated Toljan, who we need to replace as soon as possible. At the end of the day, a successful first season. Second in Serie B, we are right back up to Serie A after that shocking relegation. Let's see if we can keep ourselves up next season. At the start of the second season, we make a couple of very big signings. First of a centre-back, free agent at this stage. It is the former Juventus player Daniele Rugani joining us here at Sassuolo for zero euros. Second man into the club in the second season is the man for present and future. A right back, replacing Tolian. He's only 21. It is Mattia Zanotti joining us from Inter for a measly 8 million. And last but not least, the biggest player joining us in the second season. He's 32 already, but he gives us necessary experience. He's had bag of, bags of experience with uh, in the Premier League with Arsenal, Chelsea... And also winning the Euros with Italy. I am speaking about a man whose contract was expiring. Jorginho joining us for 19 million from Arsenal. At the start of the second season, we've also cleared out the club here. Guillaume to Sporting Charleroi. Obiang to Elas Verona. Moro to Al City. Antis to Sevilla. Boloca, big player to Strasbourg. He was, of course, not Italian. Ciervo to Cardiff. He is Italian, but without a lot of potential. We have Mulatieri who goes to Porto, Misori on loan to, of course, Norwich, and then Satalino winter to uh, Mansari to Riwa, Marginean, if I call this name correctly, to Gaziantep in Turkey, Saide to Empoli, and then Kumi on loan to Lecce, Flamingo to Salernitana, and the big one in Torstved to Bergamo Calcio, so we've really, really thinned out the squad here. I may have done a little bit too much here because we don't have a goalkeeper, nor a CDM, nor a striker even on the bench. So, but at least we have cleared out the club. We have a fantastic start in 11 with nearly only Italians, only I think a couple of players in Deutsch, Enrique and Loriente, who are not Italians in this starting 11. So we've done a good job in that respect. Maybe also, yeah, we put Rugani in, so he... Tresoldi is, of course, a Brazilian, so he doesn't really belong here. Okay, lads, I have at least solved one problem, bringing back Russo from his loan spell. So we, at least we have a backup goalkeeper for the CDM and the striker position. We may need to wait a little bit to find new players who are... First Maybe. season back in Serie A for Sassuolo and we finish in sixth position. How insane is that? We finish in European football here in our first season back in Serie A after being... Of course, relegated to Serie B, promoted back here. I mean, I am in dreamland. I can't believe my eyes. The Italian Cup goes in to Roma in an Rome derby. We have been knocked out by Atalanta in the round of 16. Next season we'll play European football, but let's have a look at how this season unfolded. Bayern beat Inter in the Champions League. Leipzig beat Frankfurt in an all-German affair in the Europa League. And Copenhagen brought the trophy to Denmark, defeating Betis. I mean, am I seeing things, lads? 18 goals for Jorginho from CDM. He's our top scorer with 9 assists as well. Has this man discovered the second position or what? Our squad is looking great. Most of them Italians as well. Apart from players like Enrique, Loriente, Antoic. Most of the others are... In fact, all the others are... From Italy, the bench we have to clear out a little bit. We have promoted Esposito, an Italian centre-back, to the first team to get loaned out. Ferrari will uh, end his career at, of course, the end of this season. I am really excited to see us play European football. That went a lot quicker than expected. From Serie B to Serie A to 6th place. Season 3 is underway, we are in Europe and we go in for an absolute world beater. An exciting prospect. Coming in from the Premier League in this save. It is Giorgio Scalvini joining us from Bournemouth for 45 million. 
Which means that we only have about 9 million left, but of course a few non-Italians in the squad that we could sell. Just like Jeremy Tolian who goes to Crystal Palace for 3.9 million. And Armol Oriente, the big, big sale here. To Nottingham Forest, to the Premier League for 46.4 million. And just like that, we have struck a deal for a new CDM coming into the club. From Torino, his contract was expiring. It is Samuele Ricci joining us for 23.5 measly million. And guys, I have just struck a monster deal. A new left leg, an Italian. Coming into the club, replacing Doig in a swap deal. Plus money. If I talk about a monster deal, I talk about this. Destiny Udogi joining us from Trophyless Spurs for 20 million. Plus our current right back, Toijin. A rating. Absolutely brilliant. Which means we still haven't gotten a striker in the team. I have forgotten about that. I'm not gonna lie, lads. I was too focused on Udogi 2284 and Richie 2380. I mean, our start 11 is looking absolutely brilliant. Saverio Bianco on loan at Feyenoord has gone up to an 81. That is absolutely crazy. Absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to leave him at lo on loan here. He's there for yet another half a season. After that, he will right slot in. Season 3 is finished and we have just about not finished in the top 4. One point behind Milan. That is crazy. 7th place though only. 66 for Milan, 66 for Roma, 66 for Bergamo, Calcio, 8 Gea, Atalanta, and then 65 for ourselves. Inter win the Coppa Italia over City rivals Milan, while we have been knocked out by Palermo in round of 16. That was not great. The Champions League goes to Milan over PSG. We were, of course, in the Europa League where we topped our group three points ahead of Sturm Graz. We didn't play the preliminary round. In the round of 16, though, we got knocked out by Athletic Club, a very difficult opponent. And in the end, it is Villarreal defeating Panathinaikos of all clubs in the final of the Europa League. And finally, Union Berlin win the Europa Conference League over Napoli. I mean, 21 goals for Pinamonti up to an 82. What a growth for a 27-year-old player. 15 goals even for Berardi up to an 89. Yanko returned from loan up to an 86 at 19 years of age. Kole Osho up to an 80. Dandrea up to a 77. I mean, our wingers are absolutely brilliant. Udogi up to an 85. Even Jorginho still with 5 goals, 12 assists. Not the 16 from last season, but still. And the team is looking amazing as well. Look at that front three. A great midfield. A very good defense. Maybe we could replace Rugani there next season. But otherwise... Turrat, even the goalkeeper, 24, 86 rated with his backup, 20, 79. We have promoted both Marchetti and Coppola, who are still very young. A centre-back, 63 rated. A right-winger, 65 rated. Both 16-year-olds. I'm a bit disappointed that we didn't get into the top four, which was possible. But seventh place is still good in our third season with Sassuolo. First signing we make in season number four. Where we'd only have about 52 million in our budget, so we have to be very careful. Is a new CDM from Inter in this save. Hopefully replacing Jorginho from next season onwards or so. For 30.9 million, Matteo Prati joining Sassuolo. We have now made a massive clear out, selling Ruan Tresoldi, non of course Italian, for 11.7 million to Benfica. Luca D'Andrea, who is Italian, but we had too many wingers, 16.4 million, two mines. Missori, also Italian, 1.95, two Norwich. And then Rizzo, another player from coming up from our youth academy. We now cashed in on him. Which means that we are back up to 41 million for two potential more players. Nearly all of our money went into a new centre-back. Replacing Tresoldi, his contract was expiring. That's the only way we got him from Arsenal. He's only 24 still. It is Ricardo Calafiori joining us for 30 million from Arsenal. After the big signing of Ricardo Calafiori, we had to cut ties here with our last signing. But I finally wanted a backup striker and I got him from Inter. Francesco Pio Esposito for only 2.2 million coming into the club. The team is coming together nicely. Of course, one player in the starting 11 in Calafiori replacing uh, Rugani. Calafiori is, of course, 24, 80 rated, while Rugani is 31, 77. Scalvini, the chef in defense, the leader. 
We have Jorginho still in the starting 11. Alongside Ricci. Miretti as well in midfield. Pinamonti the striker. Bianco and Berardi the fantastic winger. We will be once again in Europe, this time in the Europa Conference League, where the target of the board is to win the cup, so we know what we got to do this season. I can also proudly tell you that with the sale of Mateus Enrique to Athletic Club of all places for 25.7 million, means that we have shipped out all our non-Italian players for now. As you can see by the badges of the country, of course, we only have Italian players now in the squad. Which means that our challenge could be completed this season, but of course it won't, as we are not in the Champions League. the season, and we have qualified for the UEFA Champions League in Season 5. Wow! Fourth place in Serie A. 76 points. That is, two points per game if my maths are still with me. Juve win the cup over Mila, and yeah, here we got knocked out in round of 16 against Bologna. PSG win the Champions League over Manchester City. The Europa League goes to Bayer Leverkusen over Man United. And we've of course been in the Europa Conference League this season. 12 points, we topped our group. We didn't play the preliminaries. In the round of 16 we just about overcame Gang. But in the quarters we got knocked out by RB Leipzig. I mean, finally it is Athletic Bilbao defeating Newcastle in the final. We are looking at 23 goals by our striker Pina Monti. That is just insane, I mean... I didn't know he could, he had that in his locker when I picked this team up. 20 goals for our youth academy player Bianco, who is 90 overall at 20 years of age. I've rarely created such a player. 11 goals for Berardi, who has gone down by one. 10 for Coleosho, who is a backup winger. And I'm not gonna lie, our team, apart from maybe Jorginho, who can replace with Prati. Jorginho now being 35, of course, 80 rated. This team otherwise looks ready for the Champions League. Pina Monti 84, but still scored by far the most goals of this team. Turati, the goalkeeper, up to 87. Like so many players, Massimo Martino came up. He's gone up by 22. I mean, he's gone up just because I changed his position. And I've never seen such a highly rated youth academy player. That is crazy. We've had an absolutely brilliant season. Getting into the Champions League is fantastic. Quarterfinals of the Conference League. I would have hoped we could go all the way there. But yeah, I'm really excited to see this team play in the UEFA Champions League in Season 5. The first signing of Season number 5 is going to be a very, very big one. In centre midfield, because Jorginho is going to retire at the end of the season. We needed a new superstar in midfield. Here he is, getting a royal presentation, the red carpet, or the green, rather, for Sassuolo. It is Nicolo Barella joining us from RB Leipzig. His contract was expiring, 60 million he cost us. For the second signing of the season, we go in a bit of a different direction. We go in for a new left back. Only 20 years of age, giving us a bit of depth in this position. 15 million he cost us, Pierre Abate. I mean, with Abate 2076, the left back, coming in, giving at least competition to Udogi. We have also switched the formation so that we can accommodate Nicolo Barella, 30, 87 overall. Prati goes to the bench, Volpato alongside him, Jorginho on the reserves now, he's 35, retiring. Alongside loaning out whole he's the players, we've also sold some in Lombardi, a uh, youth talent who wasn't really developing as much as I wanted him to. We needed the cash, just like for Colombo. And we still do have about 38 million to go in for one final player. We've even sold Justin Kumi for 19.9 million to Avrefs AC in France. Now hear me out, lads. I want to give some competition to our striker, Pina Monti. By bringing in another Italian national team striker. He was at the Euros. He's now 28. 83 overall. It is Gianluca Scamacca coming in from Real Betis for 40 million plus Francesco Esposito. He wasn't bad, but we just needed that upgrade. And so this is the final team for season number 5. Our first season in the Champions League. Of course, we have added players like Barrella, 30-87. But of course, the last one we've added is Skamaka, 28-year-old striker, 83-rated. Uh, an all-round very good team, Abate on the bench, of course. And this is how our first ever Champions League visit is looking like. We will have to face Barcelona, Galatasaray and Rangers in the group. I mean, well, on the 1st of January here, in season number 5, we are sitting on top 
of Serie A. One point out of Inter, two out of Milan. Very, very congested still. And in the Champions League, we've come second. But what a advantage over Rangers. Ten points ahead of them and ten points ahead of Galatasaray. We've absolutely smoked that group alongside Barcelona. In the round of 16, though, is where it begins to be very, very hard. Against PSG, we will face. Oh, so this is where our journey could already end this season in the Champions League. But let's look at it positively. We have a very strong starting 11. Captain Berardi still at an 87. Can we beat PSG at home at the Mapai Stadium? It's a one-all draw, actually. Not a bad result. Berardi scored. Sobosla equalized. Joker has missed the pen for PSG. Here it is then at the Parc des Princes with the question. Can we prevail away in Paris? 1-1 one, one the scoreline. But we lose. We bow out in the round of 16. Very close. Asensio and Ribeiro kick us out. Bianco gave us a cancellation. The end of season enough. number 5. We just about don't win the league. Once again on 76 points. Just 2 points behind Milan in 2nd place. But we are very very close. The EA Sports Super Cup, where we were involved as well, goes to UV over Milan. We lost to UV in the semi-finals. However, we do win our first trophy in this rebuild as we defeat Juventus on penalties 4-2 in the final of Coppa Italia. The Champions League goes to Milan to Italy over Real Madrid. The Europa League also goes to Italy to Napoli over Chelsea. And finally... To Germany, the Conference League, Frankfurt over Hearts from Scotland. Berardi has still had an unbelievable season at 33, down to an 87, but 18 goals, 8 assists, both the most amount. 15 goals for Scamacca, the new man, 14 for Bianco, and even 12 still for Pia Pinamonti, who is 86 rated, higher rated than Scamacca. Bianco had a 92 at 21 years of age. We have also found three fantastic Youth Academy players who are all going to get promoted as they turn 16. Franco gets promoted immediately. We have built an unbelievable side to Ratti 88, Calafiori 84, Scalvini 88, Udogi 88, even Zanotti 86, Parella still at an 88, 85 Miretti, 85 Ricci, 86 Pinamonti, we still have even Ratti on the bench who is, where is he, also 85 rated at 24. Jorginho and Rugani both are going to retire at the end of this season. We've had a magnificent season, second in Serie A. Round of 16 in the Champions League was a bit unlucky, but we had to face PSG at some point. It, that was bound to happen. Semi-finals in the Super Cup, winners of Coppa Italia, our first title in this rebuild. Now to start off this sixth season, we make one massive signing for the midfield. Jorginho has retired. And that's why we bring back the prodigy. The prodigal son, Davide Fratesi, from Brighton in this save for 67 million. He's 85 rated, 28 years of age. The funny thing is, though, he doesn't even start Fratesi. He will chop and change with Miretti and Ricci, probably also with Prati. But yeah, we have a very strong midfield now in every aspect. Cole Osho on the bench, Coppola returned from loan. Also made a couple of sales, namely Vittorio Ferri to Fulham for 50.4 million. We still do have 74 million in the bank and we are a bit weak on centre back, but the ones I wanted to go in for are just out of our price range. We have sold Massimo Martino, 30.3 million to Fiorentina, as well as Max Conti to Michelin for 5.2 million. Lorenzo Sorrentino, third string goalkeeper for 18.3 to Marseille. Pietro Longo, the next one, to Molenbeek for 4.5 million. We have made a few sales just to make this transfer happen here. A centre-back, 22-year-old, 89 rated, a regen. Emanuele Valentini, 126 million, plus Volpato, just to get in this massive centre-back, 22-year-old, 89 rated. We only have 3 million left in our bank. We've absolutely worn ourselves out in terms of budget. But we've still done an overall brilliant job. Cole Osho and Coppola, they will chop and change from substitutes and reserves. We have two wingers there. A centre-back now on the bench that is certainly not going to be Valentini. It is Calafiori who is now going to the bench. Now in the Champions League this season, we'll be in a group alongside Olympic Marseille Rangers and Shakhtar Donetsk. Actually a gift, I would say. We have to get out of this group. At point of season number six, 
We have done a pretty terrible job so far. 19 games, 31 points. And we are 16 points behind Roma, who are 11 points out of second place Fiorentina. What a season they are having, Roma. However, we have made it through to uh, the round of 16 in the Champions League in second place behind Marseille. And we will face Manchester City, of course. I mean, this rebuild is becoming more and more difficult than because at this stage where we got knocked out against PSG. This season we are up against Manchester City, no lesser opponent, but first leg at home at the Mapai Stadium. Can we get something? Absolutely, we win that game. 2-1, Zanotti, Berardi score the goals, Foden score for City. Here we are then at the City of Manchester Stadium for the second leg of the round of 16. 2-1 up from the first leg. Can we pull through to the quarters? Yes! 3-2, aggregate win, one all on the night. Berardi scored us in front, Savio gave them an equaliser. But we pull through to the quarterfinals, overcoming Man City. In the quarterfinals, we face AC Milan, first away from home at San Siro. Team of our own country, can we get something out of San Siro? Yes, we win 2-1. Yanko and Berardi, our wingers score our goals. Baldi, if that is Alejandro Baldi, the left back, scored for Milan. The second leg is upon us at Mape Stadium. Can we actually make the way to the semi-finals against Milan? 2-1 up from the first leg. And we win again, 2-1. 4-2 on aggregate, again Berardi and Bianco with the goals. Baldi once again also for Milan. It is semi-final time and we will face Juventus away from home at the Juventus Stadium. In the first leg, another Italian job. Can we do something away here? It's a nil-nil draw, so nothing really happens. Here goes nothing, lads. Second leg at home at the Mappei Stadium. Can we make the big step towards the Champions League final? Towards glory, yes, 3-1 win at home. Pina Monti with a brace, Calvini with a goal, Vlaovic won for them. But we absolutely destroy Juventus at the Mapai Stadium and go through to a first ever Champions League final for Sassuolo. In the Champions League final, we will face Atletico Madrid on the 2nd of June 2029. In a classical encounter, Liverpool beat Man United to clinch the Europa League. And Real Sociedad also claimed European silverware, defeating Ajax in the Europa Conference Not League. gonna lie, we haven't had the best of seasons in Serie A. We have climbed back up to 5th place. So if we don't win the Champions League tonight, we won't even play, of course, Champions League football in a potential Season 7. We also don't win the Super Cup as Inter win that over Juventus, while we have been defeated by Inter in the semis. We however do win back-to-back -back Coppa Italias, defeating Juventus and becoming the experts, the kings of Coppa Italia. 18 goals for Saverio Bianco, I mean what a youth academy player, 10 assists, 93 overall at 22 years of age. I mean, he's on the pathway of Lionel Messi. 16 goals for Pina Monti, 87 rated, 15 for Berardi, 11 for Coleosho, and even 10 for Scamacca, backup striker. The team we have built is absolutely incredible. We have Prati now at the CDM spot. He's 25 while Richie is 27. A very good bench. A very good starting 11. Bianco 93. Udogi 90. Valentini 90. Scalvini 89. What a backline. What a goalkeeper also. Turati from the OG setup here at Sassuolo. And Pinamonti also from the default setup. 87 overall. With of course... Also Berardi, still at 34 years of age, the captain, 86 overall. For now though, let's play the Champions League final at San Siro in Italy against Atletico Madrid. With Fratesi the starting 11, ahead of Miretti who is on the bench.
corner kick here in the fourth minute. It's Berardi to bring it inside. Good header, good save. Another corner, Berardi from the other side. It's deflected, but Davide Fratesi is still there and scores. After just seven minutes, we are one nil up. Davide Fratesi with a fantastic power shot from about 25 meters over the goalkeeper, over Oblak, to make it one nil to Sassuolo. What a shot, what a goal. It's a free kick now. Hakan Shalan Nolu to bring it inside. Careful, it's 1-1. Oh my god, how fast did that go? What a free kick by the Turkish maestro, Hakan Shalanolu. And what a shot here. One all. Neves, Ruben Neves, careful, good ball into Cardoso and to Ratti with a big save. Here is Cardoso for Atletico Madrid, careful, into Chalanolu, back to Molina. Molina going into the box and they score. It's 2-1, they've turned the game around. It's Ruben Neves. Here is Pinamonti now. Pinamonti, can he go on goal here? It's Pinamonti! Equalizer! What the first half, just at the end. In extra time of the first half, we score a goal. Pinamonti just goes past the defense. No one can keep up to him and then he scores it. Absolutely brilliant goal. Hits the post first and then goes in. Prati. Can we immediately make something happen here? Very early doors in that second half. Fratesi, Pinamonti. Pinamonti doesn't get through here. I mean, compared to the first half, this second one has been playing average at best. Now maybe not like that again. Against Prati. Still Cardoso. Plays in a good ball to Chalanolu. Rice. They shoot and still rise. We block it somehow, but still Atletico on the ball. And Turati needs to make a save. We have switched out three players. Miretti comes in. Ricci comes in for Prati. Miretti for Fratesi. And Scamacca for Pina Monti. Here is Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Atletico will want to get something here out of extra time, but so do we. And it's still Declan Rice. Now it is Florentino and Turati with the save. Good play. Now Domenico Berardi. We haven't seen too much of him so far in this game. I mean, compared to the first half, the second one had been average. And here is Kamaka for the first time. Now, good display. It's Berardi. Good save. Berardi on the corner. Can he create something from nothing? Still ourselves on the ball. It's Barella. And now Miretti. Oh, what a shot. For the last quarter of an hour, I've brought on Cole Osho for Bianco, who is now a bit tired. Let's see what the right-footed player from the left can do. Four goals in the first about 20 minutes, but then nothing happened again. Maybe until now, it is Alvarez and Turati with a good save. And now Berardi trying to set up Cole Osho, the new man. Cole Osho loses out though here. And now we go to penalties. That is the game done and dusted. 120 minutes, 2-2. We start off with Gianluca Scamacca, our striker, against Jan Oblak. And he, oh my god, just stands still and saves it, Oblak. But Alvarez doesn't score as well to Ratti saves. And now we have Barella on the ball. Nicolo Barella against Jan Oblak scores. First penalty in... Now it is Alejo Viliz, and he scores as well, it's one all. Fabio Miretti against Janoblak in goal, it's Miretti who scores. We are up once again, 2-1. Now Declan Rice against Turati, Declan Rice scores as well, slots home. It is Captain Domenico Berardi, can he score here? For his club, yes, 3-2 up. And now Dukure. Dukure against Turati. Oh my god, how did he save that? Went right through him. Now Valentini, the centre back. Valentini scores as well. 4 3 up. If we save that next pen, if Turati saves it against whoever this is, against Pavar, I think, then we are the Champions League winners. Can Turati save it against Pavar? Yes! 
Sassuolo are the champions of Europe. Sassuolo on top of the Champions League. Turati with two saves in this penalty shootout. Makes us the Champions League winners. Pava misses it. Here it is again. The decisive miss. Turati with a big, big, big save. He has been one of the heroes and deserves the recognition. But lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild with Sassuolo, then please consider dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and tell me in the comments what other challenges you'd like to see next. For now, I'm gonna leave you alone with the celebrations as our captain, Domenico Berardi, the OG Sassuolo player, is going to lift the trophy, the UEFA Champions League trophy. It's been Rebuild Sombrero. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm out.